So Vincent is asking, my wife passed 10 years ago. I have not dreamt about her, did not receive any signs from her. I want to know whether she is in heaven or the spiritual world with God, whether she is all right. My friend Vincent, I really appreciate you reaching out to us and sharing this with us and, you know, seeking the Bible for some peace of mind. And I really hope that today we can give that peace of mind to you through God's word, which is the truth. And so um, my friend Vincent, first of all, I want to say I'm so sorry for your loss. Um, you know, I'm so sorry. We live in a world of sin where we, we you know, do love, lose our loved ones for a time. And it, and it is hard and it's very sorrowful. But I do want you to know where your wife is now. And um, let us go to God's word because I want to make sure this is super clear. This is not my opinion. This is God's word. And so I just hope that you see this um, for what it is. And so I want you to first know that when the Bible talks about death, it talks about it as the, um, in a way, um, the image that it portrays death as is as a sleep, right? Because it's not forever. We're not going to die forever. If we've received Christ, we will awake to everlasting life. And there's so many places in the Bible where God talks about death as a sleep. It's temporary. Um, and so you look in the book of John 11, this is talking about Lazarus. You remember this story where Jesus uh, raises Lazarus from the dead. And so um, in John chapter 11, verses 11 through 14, um, you know, Jesus says, you know, these things he said after him, you know, our friend Lazarus sleeps, but I go that I might wake him up. So he tells his disciples that, hey, Lazarus is sleeping. Well, his disciples say, you know, Lord, if he sleeps, he'll get well. Like, don't, don't wake him up. Let him sleep. He'll, maybe he'll get better. Yet another good example of disciples taking Jesus too literally. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You know, he, they were thinking literal sleep. And verse 13, Jesus says, however, Jesus spoke of his death. But they thought he was speaking about taking rest and sleep. And so in verse 14, Jesus then plainly says to him, Lazarus is dead. And so Jesus is, you know, again, depicting death as a sleep. We see this in the Old Testament um, in Psalms chapter 13, verse 3, he, when David says, Consider and hear me, O Lord my God, enlighten my eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death. So, you know, David was crying to God for salvation, to help him out of, you know, he was constantly being pursued by um, his father-in-law, Saul, who was trying to kill him. And so he said, you know, I'm going to sleep. He, he didn't want to die. And so it, he likened it unto sleep. And then again, you know, um, while death is asleep, uh, thank God, this is where it gets good. There's a promise of eternal life. There's a promise of waking from this sleep. And so um, I want you to know, Vincent, that, you know, your wife is not, you know, somewhere in a spirit world. She's not, you know, um, hurting anywhere. She's not suffering. She's asleep. Just like, you know, see a, a child or a person calmly, peacefully sleeping. That's what she's doing right now. She's at peace. She's sleeping. Um, in First Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 through 18, I want to read this to you because I think this is the most important passage of scripture for anybody who's ever lost a loved one. Um, this is God's words of comfort and promise to you. So I really hope you take this to heart in First Thess Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 through 18. And here it reads, it says, but I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren. I don't want you to be like somebody who doesn't know concerning those who have fallen asleep those who have died, lest you sorrow or are sad like others who have no hope. You should not be sad like as if there's no hope. No, no, no. It says, for if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus, those who have died in Jesus. It says, for this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep or those who have, who have died. It says, for the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. So when Christ comes to take his people home, those who are alive here on earth, we're going to be on the land on earth, and we're going to see Jesus coming, and he's going to shout, and he's going to make a call for his people to come out of the graves. And all those who've ever died will come out of the grave and they'll be caught up to God in the air. And so we'll see it happen. If we're alive on the earth, we will see our loved ones who've passed away resurrect and 
go up to Jesus in the clouds. And then um, it says, then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus shall we always be with the Lord. And verse 18, it says, therefore, comfort one another with these words. This should be a comfort to you that whether, um, you know, you, you fall asleep in Jesus as well, or if you live to see Jesus come, that you will see your wife again. She's sleeping until Jesus comes and takes her out of the grave. And so, this is a very, very beautiful um, and precious promise that we can take home um, from God, that he has our loved ones, that we can rest assured of our salvation and that those who are, um, who have, you know, passed away, that they are sleeping and they're at peace and they're at rest. And so, um, you know, just one more passage to just show you um, for sure, you know, this is, you know, this is the, the course of events that will happen in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 51 through 58. It says, Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep or pass away or die, but we shall all be changed in, the, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal, meaning our bodies that can die, must put on immortality. God will give us a new body that cannot die. That's a promise and a blessing we can have our put our hope in. It says, so when this corruptible has put on incorruption and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. And we can say, oh, death, where is your sting? Oh, hell, where is your victory? No, we have been victorious through Jesus Christ. He has overcome the grave. We will never die again. We will never be separated by, from our loved ones, from God, from Jesus in the sleep of death ever again. And then it goes on and um, uh, it says in verse 30 or 57, but thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And in verse 50, it says, therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. So whatever we've put our investment in, in this life, just know that, um, we want to put our investment in spiritual things and things that cannot be corrupted, not in this physical world. You know, I think a lot of times we want physical things. We want a sign. We want a dream. We want, you know, something. We want to see a vision. We want some sort of miracle to know, you know, that something's going on. But Jesus is simply telling us the truth that, hey, I've promised and my promises are real and my promises are here for you. You just need to trust them by faith. And when you do, you will see the fruit. You'll see it in your life. You'll see the peace that I promised you that passes all understanding come into your heart and it'll change you on the inside. And once you receive that by faith and you grow and develop in your faith and trust in God, then you can have the, the blessings that Jesus has for you, which is not only you know, the fruit of the Holy Spirit, when you ask God for his spirit, the love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, um, you know, gentleness, temperance, all these beautiful things, but we can know God and know that we have eternal life. And we know that we can, you know, set our, <laughs> set our, our money in the bank in heaven, in, in our heavenly treasure. And we can know we have eternal life and salvation and we will see our loved ones again. And so I hope that that is a comfort to you, Vincent. And again, I apologize. I'm, I'm so sorry for, you know, I'm sure you've had a very hard time since your wife's passing and I, and I, I really, my heart goes out to you. Um, but please know that God loves you and he loves your wife and he's not forgotten her. And that um, in the last day, uh, you will see your wife one day again. So may God bless you, Vincent. And if you ever have any other thoughts or questions about this, please be sure to go to our website or reach out to us once again. We are here to pray for you and, and um, to point you closer to your walk with God. Mm -hmm.